Hello everyone, I'm Lauren Fisher. I've been a professional photographer since 1978 and I do a lot of workshops now and I do fine art nature-based photography which I just am opening a gallery here so people online you're missing the gallery and some of the people who are here just uh, seeing the gallery for the first time so it's just getting rolling so so uh, it's, it's pretty exciting to have the gallery. Uh, I've I do a lot of workshops and one of the most frequent questions I get is what lens should I use? And so I thought, well, let's just have a little session and talk about that. So like I said, by far, uh, number one question I get is what, what lens should I use? And so I want to start off by talking about the focal length of lenses. And so that sounds a bit technical, but it's really not. And we will be doing a little bit of tech talk tonight and, and, uh, uh, but we'll, we'll keep it simple since I have a simple mind. So a uh, 50 millimeter lens is considered a normal lens. And that's based on the field of view. So if, if you're just looking at a scene, that is the same as a 50 millimeter lens. They, built a fifth, they created 50 millimeter around a human's field of view. So just what you're seeing is what a 50 millimeter lens will see. Anything that is uh, a wide angle lens is a number lower than 50 millimeters. So 20 millimeter, 35 millimeter, 16, anything below 50 is considered wide angle. Anything above 60 is a telephoto lens. So a, a wide angle has a wider field of view, so it can see more than the human eye. And then the telephoto has a narrow, a more narrow field of view. So it gives you the, the effect of being closer to something, okay? So if you think of a uh, uh, wide angle as just kind of turning your head, that's what a wide angle might see. And the, the smaller the number, the wider it is. The bigger the number, the more, the more it uh, zooms in. So when we're thinking about what lens to use, it really is quite simple. I have a definitive answer every time. It depends <laughs> and it depends on a lot of things so if you're just want to be a lazy dog and carry one lens uh, then it really doesn't matter what lens you take because I can assure you it will be the wrong one at some point right if you're out shooting for the day at some point it'll be the wrong lens but the real answer comes by what do you want to say with the photo that's what determines what lens you want to use and what really comes down to is what is your center of interest? What is the center of interest in your photo? And if you don't know what the center of interest is in your photo, it really doesn't matter what lens you use anyway because you, you're not gonna get much of a uh, photo most of the time. Now I will tell you right now that every rule and every suggestion and everything that I ever tell you, I can prove it wrong, okay? so. For the, for the most part, uh, if a photo is not strong enough, it probably doesn't have a strong enough center of interest. But like I say, I'll even show you a picture later that doesn't have a center of interest at all, but it's pretty strong. So, so that crevice, crevice that, that, uh, <laughs> that whatever word I'm trying to come up with, the noise come out. So, but it does help to know what your center of interest is. And so, I, you know, I, I love just being able to have a place for the eye to work around the rest of the photo, just a place for it to start and then see what's going on in the rest of the photo. And then when you know what your center of interest is, then you can decide what lens you're going to creatively use. And that's what it comes down to for me is, is the creative use of the lens, not just which one gets me uh, easiest to carry. So a lot of photographers, choose a lens based on how far away or how close to the subject they're going to be. So if you're in a tight space, you break out a wide angle, right? That makes sense. A lot of times you want to have a, you need a wide angle to get the whole scene into the photo. Or you have a big vista and you want to 
get the whole vista into the photo. Or a cityscape or something that you just want to get everything in one shot. So the wide angle lens makes a, a lot of sense for that. <clears throat> You know, even a, a mountain range, you might just use the wide angle. Or if you're shooting something that's far away, you pull out a telephoto. And if it's really far away, you bring out a big telephoto. <laughs> this was from the solar eclipse down in Chile last month. You know, using a, using a telephoto is not a bad thing just to get closer to something. So a lot of times you may know ahead of time what the situation is going to be, and then you know what lens to take, right? And it might be the right one. But sometimes you don't. You don't know what you're going to run into. So the creative answer is, well, what is my center of interest going to be? Now, what lens am I going to use to emphasize that? And that's what it really comes down to is, how do I emphasize my center of interest, what it is I'm trying to say, what it is I'm really trying to present. And so a wide angle lens will make a scene look vastly different than a telephoto. So a, a wide angle can make the foreground more dominant and a telephoto will make the background more dominant. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. So I'll, I'll show you what I mean here in a second. I can see my online is running a little bit slower than local. So so one of the cool things about being a professional photographer is I, I'm lucky enough to work with uh, a, a lot of different people and, and once in a while I get to shoot a supermodel or two. So I'm lucky to have a supermodel for us on this one. Um, okay, so, so really that's me, but I'm uh, sorry. Uh, um, so, this is a picture taken with a 20 millimeter lens. How important is the background in this shot? Not very, right? It, it, uh, it, it uh, is kind of pushed away, not much going on back there, not important to the shot. But watch what happens when I change to a 50 millimeter lens to the background. Watch that background. Suddenly, that lovely shed in the background becomes larger. Now, the camera moved so that the supermodel would be the same size. So I uh, had to move back with a 50 millimeter lens from the 20 millimeter lens to keep the, the supermodel in the, the same size. But isn't it cool how the background got bigger? Now watch what happens when I go to a 200 millimeter lens. Watch that background. Suddenly that background has become much more prominent in the picture. And, it, and again, I had to move farther back so that, move the camera farther back so that the model would be the same size. But let me show you again the 50 millimeter. Now watch the background. The background gets smaller as you get wider or it gets less prominent, okay? And then again with the 20 millimeter. Pretty cool, huh? So again, with a 20 millimeter lens, the foreground's pretty prominent, background's not too important. Go to a 50 millimeter lens, that background becomes bigger. 200 millimeter lens, background's bigger yet. So, when I'm out taking pictures, I'm thinking about what is it that I'm trying to say? What, what do I want to emphasize? What lens should I use? This is a, a <laughs> lovely row of birch trees in Maine. And so, let me, let me, I'm sorry, I'm going to mute everybody here. I've got to hit the right button to do that. Okay. So again, online, I've, I've muted everyone if you want to ask a question or something, just un unmute yourself. So this is shot with a 20 millimeter lens. And notice how far apart the trees feel. 
then when I, I, so I was thinking, well, I'd really like to have those trees feel like they're closer together. So I pulled out the 200 millimeter lens. Same aperture, same f-stop, uh, same, same aperture, same shutter speed. I had to move farther back with the 200 millimeter lens, but it makes a totally different picture, doesn't it? So in this same one, scene? same scene, exactly. Yeah, we'll see the other one again. So, so you can notice the, the tree on the left in this shot. The first one you see on the left is the first one that you'll see on the left with the 20 millimeter. So I'll show you that again. So look how the path becomes more dominant in this shot, right? This one is, is about, to me, this one says the story of here's a path going through a, a row of birch trees versus when I shoot it with a 200 millimeter lens, it's, this is a, a birch, a row of a bunch of birch trees with a little path in it. Totally different story. And the only thing that changed was my lens. So this is with a 20 millimeter lens, bluebells in a forest. So notice how the ones in the foreground are a lot larger than the ones in the background, right? The wide angle emphasizes the foreground, pushes the background away. Then when I got out the 200, the ones in the background are almost the same size as the ones in the foreground. Which picture is better? Depends on what you're trying to do. Absolutely, depends on what you're trying to do, what you're trying to say. Right? So a lot of times, you know, it's a creative decision. It comes down to what is it that I'm really, really trying to emphasize here? And so I will, you know, I will use a wide angle lens to make things feel like they're spread apart. This is on in, in Venice, looking over to the, another island across the way. So in this shot, the the, the boats in the foreground become dominant, right? Put on the 200. And now the scene has been, been compressed. A telephoto will actually bring the background closer to the foreground, or at least it feels like it. It doesn't actually move, but it, it creates the, the feeling of compression and that things are closer together. So again, the wide angle, making those railings feel like they're fairly far apart. Back up, put on 200, totally different photo, but the exact same spot, All right? So the telephoto compresses them, makes them feel closer together, right? Totally different photo, same spot, seconds apart. You know, you can, you can really, really make a dramatic change. You know, this is uh, a, a lovely little church painted black in Iceland. And when shot with the wide angle, looks like it's just kind of out there, nothing much around it, right? Mm -hmm. Put on the 200 and it brings that background in. So again, which one's better? Well, what are you trying to say? You know, this one's more dramatic, but if I was trying to say, well, you know, this little church is sitting out there and there's nothing else around it, then I'd, I'd want the other photo. So that's the, you know, the, the beauty of, of digital is I can try it both ways and it doesn't cost me anything. And I do that a lot. I, I you know, I change lenses a lot. I, I hear some people say, oh, I don't want to change lenses while I'm out in the field because I might get dirt in there. Well, maybe, but that's, that's the cost of life as a photographer. Or you buy a second camera so you don't have to change lenses. But, um, so I, I want to talk about something um, that there's a, a lot of uh, discussion and, and confusion about, and that's... Uh, how lenses and crop sensors uh, affect each other. So um, 
the, the traditional film 35 millimeter camera had film size that was actually just about 36 millimeters wide by 24 millimeters high. So it created that two, two to three ratio, which this photo is, you know. And so uh, when digital came out, they couldn't make affordably a sensor that big. So they made smaller ones and they're called crop sensors. And we'll talk about exactly why here in a minute. Um, so technology improved and then they were able to make full size sensors. So again, almost 36 millimeters by 24 millimeters. So about the same size as, as the old film. And so uh, I'm gonna get a little technical here, but not too technical, but don't worry, it doesn't involve a lot of math, only a little, but you don't need to cipher or anything. So it don't, you know, it, it, won't be, it won't be too much. But everyone knows that a lens is round, right? And so when light comes through a lens, it projects out the other end, it comes in the front, it comes out the back, and it's focused, the lens, all it's doing really is focusing the light and making it essentially project on a spot. And that spot is round, right? And that spot is called the circle of confusion. And it's called that because, I don't know why, because it's probably confusing. So how big that circle of confusion is, is dependent on uh, uh, the, the, the actual distance of the lens from wherever it's landing. So it's gonna land on either film or a sensor, okay? So when, when you have film or a sensor and the, the circle of confusion is landing on that, the, the sensor, let's just talk about sensor, forget about film, the sensor is actually cropping out a portion of that circle of confusion and just using that information. So rather than putting a circular thing on your sensor, it's, you're cropping out some of that picture, right? So this is the circle of confusion and it's what the, the full frame sensor might see. And so when we're looking through the viewfinder, that's what we're seeing. We're seeing what the sensor sees, right? Same thing. So we don't need to worry a whole lot about that circle of confusion. We just need to know that, that if you really wanted to, you could have more to your picture. So then a crop sensor is physically smaller than a full frame sensor. So a crop sensor is actually cropping out even more of that circle of confusion than the full frame sensor. Does that make sense? Anybody confused by that? Holler if you are, because I can explain it another way and get you even more confused. Okay, so when it creates that smaller field of vision, actually it's field of view is what it, it, it's seeing less of the field of view, it makes it look like you're looking through a, a longer telephoto lens because you're seeing less, so it's essentially your field of view is smaller, just like a telephoto lens against a, a, a normal lens gives you a smaller field of view. And from a field of view perspective, that's right. But when using a telephoto lens creatively to do compression, it's exactly the same. Exactly the same. So it doesn't matter. You get that same foreground background relationship with telephoto or wide angle on a crop sensor that you do with a uh, full frame sensor. So if you have two cameras, one's a full frame and one's a crop sensor, and you wanna have the same feel of compression, you'd use the same lens. So this one's actually shot with a 600 millimeter lens, and the background's way out of focus, and, but it feels really, really compressed. So if I put that lens on my full frame, this is what I see. If I put it on a crop sensor, I'm only gonna get the middle part of that picture, right? but the compression is going to be the same, okay? Um, and so they make lenses specifically for crop sensor cameras, and they tend to be uh, wider, and they have a smaller circle of confusion than a, a full-frame lens, right? So they have a smaller circle of confusion 
which is one of the reasons why you can't use a crop sensor, a lens built for crop sensor cameras on a full frame camera because it would throw a small circle onto your sensor. Now they've made a lot of the, the crop sensor, the crop uh, lenses so that they physically won't fit onto a full frame lens. They, they've added some, stuck some things in there so it just physically won't go on so you can't accidentally put one on. Uh, some, some do, some don't, but most of them, it's, it's, you, you can't get a, a crop lens onto a full frame lens. Um, so when you're buying lenses and you have a crop sensor camera, you have a choice. You can either buy a crop sensor lens or a full frame lens. So if you are going to upgrade in some period of time in the next 15 years, you might want to think about, do I want to buy full frame lenses now? So when I upgrade, if I upgrade to a full frame camera, I don't have to buy all new lenses because if you have all, you know, if you're a Nikon user, they're DX. Is that what Nikon is called? The DX lenses. If you have the DX series and you, and you buy a full frame camera, you can't use any of those DX lenses. Same thing with Canon and every, everybody. They're all, they're all that way. And it's not that they're trying to rip you off or anything or make extra money is they're building those DX, those crop sensor lenses so that they will give you more on, especially the wide angle end. So, uh, typically, um, you know, a 20 millimeter full frame lens will have a field of view of 30 millimeters on a crop sensor. So you're ending up with a 20, you know, you have a 20 millimeter lens, but it ends up being effectively a 30 millimeter lens as far as field of view, as far as compression and decompression, exactly the same. Can you explain compression? So we'll, I'll show you some more pictures, uh, in a moment. Um, so the question was, can I explain compression? Um, it's easier when I have a picture to show you than to try to do it in the air. Okay. So if I don't, if I don't, you know, another 15 minutes, holler out at me again. Okay. So any, any questions on the crop sensor? Sharon? And it would work either way, but I can't go with a crop sensor lens to a full frame. Correct. Full frame. So, the, so the question is, if you buy a, if you just clarify that, if you buy a full frame, a lens built for a full frame camera, you can use that on both a full frame and a crop sensor, but but, but not the other way around. If you buy a, a a crop sensor lens, you can't put that baby on a full frame camera, right? Right. Right. That's what I'm saying. The crop, you can't put the crop, you can't put the crop lens on a full frame camera. Right. But the other way works. Absolutely. Right. Right. Yes. I missed something. Um, okay. When you use a telephoto, mm -hmm. I assume I have a full frame. I have a Nikon D90. I don't think it is. No, it's a crop sensor. Yes. Something. Um, okay, I was going to say when you use a telephoto, that's cropping the picture. Wh whether it's a full frame or, or you're well, you're you're always cropping the picture, no matter what lens you're using. Remember the circle of confusion. Yeah, so, what's the difference? so so you're, so with a telephoto is, is essentially you're magnifying. You you have a smaller field of view, so you're not seeing as much. You're seeing more that way, which gives you the feel of things being closer to, closer to you or magnified and it is magnifying it uh, also it's cropping it too right sure it's cropping it and magnifying but so it's bringing something closer then why do you need a crop sensor so why do you need a crop sensor that's a good question uh they cost less oh oh what a lot less because they're smaller and they're easier to they're they're cheaper to produce the camera is still now they can until you get to the, the very high end full frame, 
you know, if you spend a thousand dollars on a on a full frame camera, do they make a thousand dollar Nikon? Yeah, I think yeah, they do. Um, and Canon, and a thousand dollars on a crop sensor, you're probably not going to see much difference in picture quality. Although technically there is, uh, but you'll see a big difference in the field of view and how much you're seeing through a lens. Well, the picture quality will come when you when you enlarge the picture. Well, so the question is, the picture quality will come when you enlarge a picture. Not necessarily, because if they both happen to be a 24 megapixel camera, they're about the same. There are some, there are some highly technical differences that if you're making monster prints, you might see a difference. But for the most part, not much. Yes? I was going to say, do you have any pictures where we can compare the crop sensor lens with the full frame? Do I have any pictures where I can... Uh, compare the crop sensor with the full frame. No, I don't have a crop sensor lens or camera, but it's essentially taking taking the middle out of the picture. So it depends on the camera. Like I just said, the you, you still can get very very nice, very good quality pictures with a crop sensor lens, the or camera. Um, but the 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 problem occurs, especially on the wider angle areas that you can't get as wide as a, you know, if you put a 20 millimeter lens that works on a full frame on that crop sensor, suddenly it's a 30 millimeter lens effectively in field of view. So you can't look at a photo and tell, was that with a crop sensor or a full frame? You just, you know, you, you, you can't, you know, almost everything else in photography, you know, I can look at this picture and I can tell you pretty much what shutter speed it was shot with, what aperture, and what lens, but I can't tell you what camera. And almost any photo, you know, when, when you really think about it and look at the photo, you can tell what aperture, what shutter speed, what, what focal length lens was used, or about, close enough, but can't tell what camera. Now, another confusing question for me is, is you put a 50 millimeter on a, on a full frame sensor, and then you take that same 50 millimeter lens and put it on a crop sensor. Why does it become like a 75 by 35? Why? So the so again, why does the why does a 50 millimeter on a crop sensor have the effective field of view of of the 75 millimeter on a full frame? It's because the sensor because it's cropping it. It's if you think of this picture and cropping out, you know, the middle of it like that very first one where I had the circle of confusion, that's what it's doing because the sensor is physically smaller. So the light coming through the lens is covering much less or, you know, much more than just the part being cropped out by that sensor. Okay. Okay. Didn't want to get into that way too much. So let's get away from that tech stuff and uh, talk about some fun things here. Uh, some specialty lenses, a couple of them. Uh, one of my favorite specialty lens is a macro. Okay, I love my macro. Uh, and so uh, macro simply lets you focus closer. So any lens has a, a limit to how close you can get to something and you can't focus anymore. So a macro lens will let you get so close that uh, it's, it, it gives you a one-to-one -one reproduction, meaning if you're taking a picture of uh, a dime, it will be the size of a dime on your sensor. Okay. So um, macro lenses come in, a, you know, a, all different shapes and sizes, but typically a 50 millimeter, a 100 millimeter, a 200 millimeter, about in that range. Uh, it might be a Nikon has a wonderful 105. Uh, Sigma makes a 90 millimeter. Um, and so I prefer the 100 millimeter myself uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, it, it lets me, uh, it means I don't have to bend over as much. Because with a 100 millimeter, I can be twice as far away as with a 50. Uh, and it costs uh, a lot less than a 200 millimeter lens. So 100 is my, is my macro of choice. Um, other than that, it doesn't matter a whole, whole lot. But macros tend to be the sharpest lens that you can put your hands on. Macros, just the way they're built, I don't know. And because they're usually not zooms, uh, they tend to be uh, extremely sharp. Now, some zooms have, uh, they'll, they'll say macro on them. And some of them tr are true macros. Some of them are just uh, micro. And 
focus a little closer than most lenses, but they won't get down to that one to one. But that might be good enough depending what you're doing. Um, so this is uh, uh, glycerin drops on a sheet of plastic with M and M peanut underneath. So just getting peanuts M and M's refracted in the in the uh, essentially water drops, but glycerin instead of water. And so that true macro giving you that one to one representation. So you're getting the same size on the sensor. And it just a macro will just let you do some some really cool things. This is. Uh, 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 soap bubbles frozen on a glass. It was 14 degrees below zero in Vermont. And so I said, hey, go outside and take pictures of soap bubbles. Uh, so uh, just getting really close with that macro lens is, is an awful lot of fun. Okay. So another specialty lens that's a lot of fun is a fisheye. And a fisheye lens is essentially a, a super wide angle. It has a very wide field of view, usually about 180 degrees. So you're seeing everything sideways. So this is a 15 millimeter lens and it's rectilinear, which means that the picture is, fills up the frame. Some fish eyes will give you a circle and essentially you're seeing the circle of confusion there, but they'll give you a, a, a circular image. And I find those to be um, not as appealing because uh, after you see about one of those or two, then they all tend to look alike. But, but uh, the rectilinear is a little bit better. But I, you know, they're, they're cool, but they have their problems. You know, if, if you have something that's not exactly in the middle, it'll become distorted. So any straight lines become bendy lines, which can be cool sometimes, right? You know, you can use that to your advantage. That can be a cool look. Doesn't always have to be a straight shot. So it is, you know, the, the fisheye is, is really emphasizing that foreground. So this is up on the Brooklyn Bridge. And if you, if you, you know, watch what you're doing, you can come up with some really cool stuff. Uh, this is out in uh, Joshua Tree. And I used the fisheye and, and just set the camera out in the desert all night and let it fire away. And so this is 160 photos put together during the night on a moonlit night so it lit up everything but you can use a fish eye and make it so people don't really know yeah it can it can be a a lovely scene or it can get really funky so if you don't like that distortion the key is to get your horizon exactly in the middle and not have anything vertical going on. So this is a, a sunrise in Hawaii and that horizon is perfectly in the middle and see how straight it is? And since there's nothing vertical going on in the picture, it looks, looks pretty nice and it really emphasizes that foreground. So this is with a fish eye, yes. Yes. So those rocks in the foreground are really pretty small, but the fisheye really makes the, the uh, rocks seem bigger. And yes, Sharon, you will be going there. What uh, are the uh, edges curved? Well, they are, but, but the, so the center line is, per oh, is perfect, no but there's nothing line. vertical in there to Got tell. It. So you can't tell that the clouds are distorted as hell. Okay. Right? Yeah. And they are, and the water is distorted as hell. You can't tell. Same thing with the inside of a balloon. We happen to have a big balloon festival coming up this weekend. So get your wide angle, stick it inside the balloon while they're inflating. They don't mind. But that's, that one's shot with a fish eye. And again, you can't tell that the you know, if you really looked at it really close, you'd say there's something kind of weird going on in the corners, especially down there in the grass. It's like, that's not quite right. But nobody would figure out what it is. You know, when I was in an ice cave in, in, in Iceland this winter, you know, that place is really small. <laughs> it's really small. So I put on the fish eye, and that's distorted as hell, but 
the woman standing there isn't because she's on in the right spot. If she was on, on the side, she'd be, uh, she'd be all warped up. Okay. So those are a couple of fun, fun lenses. So uh, when, we, when we really think about lens selection, what it really comes down to is the telephoto lens emphasizes the background. The wide angle lens emphasizes the foreground. And it, other things happen too, uh, depth of field changes. So a, a telephoto lens has much less depth of field than a wide angle, always. So if you shoot something with a 200 millimeter lens at f8 and with a 20 millimeter lens at f8, they'll have vastly different uh, depth of field. But I have found that usually when a photo, when I'm out shooting and the photo's not working for me, my problem is I have the wrong lens. I'm emphasizing the wrong thing. So uh, this is a, a shot I did up in Alaska. And I went with a friend who, a, a photographer, and, and he is, I, I can say, nuttier than I am. And we were there for 10 days and drove, I don't know, 4,500 miles. And two nights we didn't sleep. And we were heading back to the airport in Fairbanks. And, and neither of us were awake and I was driving along and saw this and I said, Oh God, Walter, we got to stop and say, yep. So we get out and first thing I do is run out in the middle of the, of the field out in the yellow part there and start shooting. And I'm, and I'm awake enough to know this isn't working. And it's like, and, I, and, and if you, if you ever go shooting with me, you'll find that I talk to me. And so I'm asking myself, what's wrong? What's wrong here? Okay. Wrong lens, dumbass. Put on the telephoto, get back on the other side of the street and bring that foreground into the, in, or that background into the foreground. So when I talk about compression of, of a shot done by the, the telephoto, this picture feels kind of flat, doesn't it? It feels like everything's about the same distance away when really that field of yellow is, I don't know, 60, 80 yards across there but it doesn't feel that far because the, the compression of the telephoto lens brings that together as opposed to a wide angle lens, which will just make that foreground feel big and just shove that background away. So that path, it's the same size up there in the middle of the picture, but the, but the wide angle lens makes it feel like it's going farther away. And, and the wide angle also makes clouds look really cool. They'll really, you know, big cloud like that, or, you know, just really accentuates those clouds and seem like that. John? Where did you focus the lens to shoot the picture? So this one's how shot. How deep in did you focus? So the question is, how, where did I focus? What's my point of focus? How deep in did I focus? This one's shot with a, a Canon makes a, a, a absolutely marvelous 11 to 24. Uh, which costs about $3,500. I don't have one. Uh, this was in Iceland and one of the other people on the workshop did. So I said, can I borrow that lens? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so at F11 with an 11 millimeter lens on, a, you know, it really doesn't matter where you focus. Everything is going to be in focus. You know, so I focus probably four feet away and then the whole world is going to be in focus. Um, if you have a lot of depth of field, it, you know, the, the rule is you focus a third of the way into the scene that you want to have in focus. That's a whole different workshop. But, you know, if, if, if something is, is uh, nine feet away, you focus three feet and, and then everything behind it and everything in front of it will be in focus in theory if you have enough depth of field. But aperture is not the only thing that matters on that. It's also the focal length of the lens and, and how close you are to their subject. So uh, in a scene like this, doesn't matter really. You know, if you're, if you're shooting F11, F16 with 11 millimeter lens, the whole world's gonna be in focus. And I love the way you have the path leading right to that cloud. Yeah, isn't that cool the way the path leads right, right back in there? So if you want it to feel compressed, you pull out that telephoto. See again, does this one just feel like you know, this is a little village in Guatemala. Like they're all almost, you know, straight up and down from each other. But 
you know, you can see that they're really from the front to the back is really, you know, how far? I don't know. It's two or 300 feet, but it feels like it's all compressed. Now, when I talked about not having a center of interest, this photo kicks that theory in right in the ass. You know, I, I think this photo works, but it doesn't have a, a very strong center of interest. Sometimes it works, right? Okay. So do you, you, you feel how that, how that compression just makes things feel flat? Just squeezes it almost. Okay, game time. So we're gonna play the game of what lens was used on these photos. So based on that foreground background relationship, tell me what lens was used, telephoto or wide angle? Wide angle. Why? Because the road's much bigger in the foreground than the background, right? It gets smaller as it goes away really fast. Telephoto or wide angle? Telephoto. Telephoto. Why? Because, yeah, the people in the background are essentially the same size as the people in the foreground. Crazy how that works. Wide angle or telephoto? Wide angle. I wanted that river to feel like it's just flowing right back past the horses. Flowing right to the beautiful light. Wide angle or telephoto? Telephoto. telephoto. Isn't this easy? <laughs> it is. It is. If you stop and think about it, you look at a photo, you can say, I can tell if that's a photo shot with a wide angle or a telephoto. And if you can't tell, odds are it's probably with a 50 or something in that range, you know, 35 to 85. You're not going to see a whole lot of emphasis. Wide angle or telephoto? telephoto? Telephoto. The back's almost as big as the front and it has that feel of that compression. It feels like everything's smashed together, right? Wide angle or telephoto? Wide angle. Wide angle. It feels expansive now, right? It's pushing that fence away from you, making the scene feel much, much bigger. If I would have shot this with a telephoto, which I didn't, you know, that barn would have been very big in the scene. So some, something interesting, uh, uh, camera phones have a very wide angle lens, mm -hmm. right? There is a, a, a massive move for young people to get nose jobs. This is true because they think their noses are too big because they take so many selfies with that wide angle lens that elongates their nose. And so they say, oh my God, my nose is too big. So they're getting plastic surgery to flatten their nose so they don't look so bad in selfies. It's true. Look it up. Yeah. It's, yeah. But that's how, you know, people don't think about why is that? It, well, it's, it's the wide angle effect. So is this a wide angle or telephoto? Telephoto. Those buildings in the background are huge. Versus when you shoot it with a wide angle. That's a wide angle. Yeah. So is it fair to say that a telephoto compresses your, your images? Yeah, absolutely it does. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the question is, it, was, is it fair to say a telephoto compresses your images? Absolutely. And the, the longer the telephoto, the more the compression. <coughs> you know, a, a lot of fashion work is done with a 300 millimeter lens because they like the look of what it does for the background and it will isolate models um and and they use a 200 an awful lot for portraits because they don't want big noses they want to you know they like the feel of a smashed compressed face rather than you know the worst thing you can do if you have a friend is stick their nose right up into a fish eye uh, <laughs> oh man so so i i've got to, i've got to tell you this one so we were I was doing a workshop in new york and and one of the women had a fish eye and she just got it and she didn't know what you know 
and so we were in in uh, Oculus, which is a new train station in, down the World Trade Center, and and uh, I said, okay, here's one thing you try: shoot straight up, and it'll be just really cool. And so as she she tipped it up, and I just leaned over the top of it and and put my face right down in there, and she goes, ah! <laughs> like, I said, you gotta you gotta make a shot of that, and and uh, it, it, let's just say it wasn't real. Uh, it wasn't, yeah, yeah, it, it was not pretty. Okay, wide angle or telephoto? Wide angle. Did you get the nostrils in it? Probably. Yeah, no, it was, it, was, it was not complimentary, let's just say that. Wide angle or telephoto? And it's a creative decision. So when people are saying, which lens should I use? What do you want to say with the photo? What is it you want it to? What is it you want to do with it? So they, that means you got to carry. That's right. You never know. So you got to carry it all. Yep. That's the bad news. That's why they make camera backpacks, right? So this is a tell or a wide angle, right? Yeah. The reeds on the front of the little pond are much bigger than the ones on the back. Nope, the but the trees are straight because because I was shooting square. I wasn't shooting up or down. Okay, this one's a little tougher. Wide angle or telephoto? Telephoto. Everybody agree? Wide angle. Hmm. Hmm. Wide angle. Wide angle. Wide angle. Wide angle because the lights in the background. Is it a 50 millimeter? It's a 50. <laughs> Almost, it's 85. So, so it's a slight telephoto. So, so the, you can see the lights in the back are, are still large. If it was a wide angle, they'd be very small. If, they were, if it was a 200 millimeter lens, they would be much bigger. Well, they're all zoom lenses. Yeah. I've done, you know, you, you can have zoom lenses that go from wide angle to telephoto. And a lot of them do, you know, a 24 to 105 or what's that 18 to 300 crazy ass lens that they have. It's like, holy crap. You know, uh, you know, the only, the bad, the bad part of those is it seems that the wider the zoom range from 18 to 300, the less sharp that lens is because they're just so hard to build. But when I was a journalist, I would have loved to have had an 18 to 300. It's like, oh, like crap. Uh, one lens, but they're slow too, and they're you know they're dark, and so there's that. But okay, a couple more here. Wide angle telephoto. Wide angle. Look how much bigger that bale of straw is than the one behind it, and it just has the feel of expansion, right? It just feels expansive. Everybody feel how that how that works. Telephoto or wide angle? Can I talk anybody into wide angle? I want to see what my power of persuasion is here. Anybody wide angle? Don't fall for it. Don't fall for it. No, it's telephoto. Just pulling that. I mean, part of it is how flat it feels, how compressed that scene feels. It doesn't feel real expansive. It feels like that mountain is just inches away from the, from the church. Whereas it's probably a mile. But this was shot with a 400 millimeter lens from way back. And yes, Sharon, you'll be able to shoot this scene. Sharon's going to Iceland with me in, in August. Only a few weeks away. Uh, okay. Okay. So that's it. Any questions? Any thoughts? Any concerns? If you don't follow me on uh, Instagram, please do. Anybody online with any questions? This was great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have a question. Yes? What is the range for a natural lens? What is the range? Uh, well, a macro is a macro. So the question is what range and what if, it, if it's a zoom? Well, so the... You know, somebody came to, I have a Mac, I do a macro workshop usually in the winter and somebody came with a, a, a 35 millimeter macro lens. 
where the hell did you get that? I've never seen one of those before. So, I mean, she had to get, she could get literally that far away from things, but it wasn't magnified very much. So it made it, you know, she always had her shadow in the picture. Um, so typically it's a 50 millimeter or 100 millimeter or 200, or, you know, something like that. I've never seen a macro bigger than 200. You know, it might be 90, it might be 105, but it's in that range. Yes? Because the macro lens is very expensive. So I got an extension, no, it's an extension. Yeah. You have an extension tube. That which, so yeah, an extension tube will, will uh, increase the magnification of your lens. So depending on what the lens is, it, it may get you down to the macro lens, macro range. Yeah. So you can also put an extension tube on a macro lens and then you're getting like a two to one reproduction or a three to one. And, and really, you know, you've seen pictures of bugs and things like that. That's, that's, you know, when you're really getting big magnification going. Any other questions? Anybody online, any questions? This was terrific, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to try to do this every month with a different uh, subject. So keep your eye out. Uh, next one will be uh, why Lauren uses a tripod all the time. <laughs> Which is fun. Okay, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.